uh, go to record mode here. And uh, so the usual disclosure that I'm going to be uh, throwing these slides up uh, after the uh, presentation as well as emailing them out. And uh, yeah, by day I sling code and by night I still try to sling code. Uh, Work-life balance in the uh, pandemic has been somewhat of a uh, challenge. Uh, so anyway though, on to talking about our actual uh, thing that we're going to talk about tonight, uh, WireGuard for fun and networking. So right now, being able to connect uh, to a uh, LAN when you're outside of it is very, very important because I mean, pretty much everyone's working from home now and uh, that server in your data center probably shouldn't necessarily be uh, live to the world for uh, being able to get to your NFS shares or whatever else you want to do with it. So uh, the new kit on the block is WireGuard, but there are several venerable old options that uh, some are better than others. Uh, PD, PPTP is uh, probably the oldest uh, and also the, the absolute worst, please don't use it. OpenVPN is very good, a perfectly viable option. And before this uh, talk here, I would have told you that, that that was about as good as you can get for free. IPsec, uh, OpenSwan I've tried to play with and it's just a utter pain in the hind end. And then the new kid on the block wire guard. So point to point tunneling protocol, dates all the way back to probably about five years before 95 and was uh, brought about by uh, Microsoft. And uh, basically it's just a plain Jane tunnel on port 1723. And unfortunately it's absolutely insecure as heck. Uh, the NSA is pretty much known to have cracked it and being able to completely listen into it. Uh, both of the authentication uh, versions of MS CHAP are completely cracked and insecure. And also you can just uh, figure out whatever you're talking about because it's a RC4 stream cipher. So it, there is no protection at all there. It's better than nothing, but not by much because all of these uh, vulnerabilities have been out there so long that pretty much any script kitty uh, in middle school can uh, break through and listen in on you. So don't use it anymore. And if you are, you need to start considering your life choices. Uh, the next in uh, sort of popularity, uh, sort of because Cisco loves it, but it's also open swan. I just found last time I tried using it, it may have improved since then, but it just was not very user friendly at all. Uh, it is an RFC uh, protocol, so I mean, there, there's it's standardized. You can go out and read it. Unfortunately, it is using some uh, standardized fixed ports, so it's really easy if uh, your ISP or employer doesn't want you using VPN. It's really easy to block, and you have a lot of options on how secure you want to make it. Uh, you can use Blowfish, AES. 3DES, I don't know why you would, but you can. And there is no known major vulnerabilities, but the word on the street is that the NSA can listen in on it. Uh, I have a link later in, on in the slide on where that leak came out. But I mean, long as you don't care about nation states uh, spying on you, uh, it's mostly harmless. And uh, in theory, it's faster than OP, OpenVPN uh, because it's uh, not necessarily user uh, mode. Uh, but I mean, in theory, usually it ends up being about a wash. And uh, the popular version that everyone knows is OpenSwan, but also it's, uh, you can, uh, I think even Cisco and pretty much everybody implements it. And the best part about it is, uh, along with uh, PPTP, uh, basically every OS under the sun has it built in and baked in that you can uh, use it uh, natively.
So it's in uh, iOS, it's in Mac OS, Linux, and Windows. The uh, last of the sort of ones that I'm uh, going to talk about here uh, before I get to the main part of the talk is OpenVPN. It's not standard, but I mean, it's open source, so it might as well be just no one's written an RFC about it. Uh, and it was developed by OpenVPN Technologies is the company name behind it and backing it. And I mean, it's using a bunch of the, the just standard stuff that is really standardized. So OpenSSL is your encryption and it supports all of the stuff that matters. Uh, 3DS, again, I don't know why you're bothering with it, but AES, Blowfish and all the others. And then it uses uh, SSL and TLS, depending on which way you want to spell it this week, uh, for key exchange. Again, everything standard. If those things are broken, you've got another heart bleed on your hand. So the you, that's the least of your worries that maybe your VPN was uh, unsecure. And uh, if you're using uh, SSH, I mean, you, you're already using a lot of these anyway. So there are no known major vulnerabilities to it. And far as we know, the NSA hasn't broken it, but I mean, just assume they have because they're the NSA. And it's really easy to use and pretty much any dummy like me can go ahead and configure it. And you can use TCP, UDP, whatever you want. It's there if you want to have it on port 1484 or 80 or one, I mean, sure, you, the, the world is your oyster. And unfortunately, it's not included in any OS out there, but it's super easy to install. And I mean, the, I've used it before, it, it works great, and it's relatively solid and mostly fast enough. But then comes in the new kit on the block, WireGuard, and it's absolutely very, very fast, and it's uh, low overhead, and it uses a whole bunch of the really new hot encryption and uh, keying and stuff, all the new kids on the block, and it's all standardized, and it's just honestly the, the best you can get your hands on. So for your encryption, it's using uh, ChaCha20 and elliptic curves. Uh, if you really want to uh, find a good way to fall asleep, I'd recommend reading all these RFCs because it, it's just absolutely riveting reading that will uh, keep you up all night long. Uh, so the, the good news is it checks all the boxes of all the newest, latest, coolest stuff on the block. Uh, its biggest uh, drawback is that it uses UDP for its uh, uh, communication. So while it's uh, completely protected against, in theory, impersonation and replay attacks, uh, you also uh, may suffer from uh, traffic shaping because it's UDP based. And there's no vulnerabilities. It's been third party audited, especially the code that's in the kernel. It's baked in there, but since it's so new, they, there may be a problem out there that no one's caught yet. We'll find out. Stay tuned. And uh, as Don had sort of inter uh, inserted in the news there, uh, there is uh, support for it in kernel 5.6. But if you want to run it on other OSs like uh, Mac or Linux or Android, uh, you have to in install a client app. As I'll show here in a little bit, it's just stupid easy. I mean, it's so easy, anybody could do it. So it's really not all that hard. And so basically how we're uh, going to uh, demo here, I don't have the Windows 10 uh, computer set up, but uh, I'm going to show you how easy it is to set up Android. Linux and Mac OS. The Windows client is about the same. And we're going to be connecting to my WireGuard VPN server out here in the cloud. And uh, of course, all of our traffic to it will be wrapped in a uh, connection here. So it won't be uh, all that hard at all. The, the biggest problem that I'm going to run into tonight is that setting all this stuff up was just so darn easy that 
actually demoing it really isn't all that showy or fancy. So uh, the the first uh, demonstration here, uh, if you catch on the the pun here, is installing WireGuard on uh, Ubuntu twenty oh four the LTS. And uh, here, if I pull up, I had recorded it ahead of time just to make sure that the demo gods wouldn't uh, get angry with me. And also the, the biggest problem is that by uh, trying to do uh, presentations on VPN software while you're demoing and showing on, uh, in a presentation, the moment you connect, you drop connection and then have to reconnect and uh, just the odds of it going bad are kind of bad. So first of all, since it's a fresh uh, Lin node uh, image, we update everything and upgrade there wasn't anything to be upgraded because I just did it before this. Then you just run apt install WireGuard and it installs all the stuff. And the next big step that's very important is that uh, we're going to want to generate the uh, private and public key. They recommend setting UMask uh, of 077 just to make sure there's no uh, uh, issues with the, the folder permissions. And so you just run uh, gen key and it creates up this uh, private key and public key. And uh, the first thing that we're going to want to do is edit a the uh, a config file here. This is just using their simple stupid uh, version that they have in their, their how to and you want to set the IP address of the uh, main of your server and then the IP address of your uh, client that's going to be connecting in. And so basically you say here, rewinding just a little bit. So we're going to edit uh, the uh, file. Uh, and so we grab the, the private key here, if I can keep my mouse out of the way. And after we've copied and pasted that into my uh, cheat sheet here, then uh, we'll want to just uh, copy that and paste it into the file uh, uh, wg0conf, which is just our WireGuard uh, conf. And notice that we're in Etsy WireGuard. And so the stuff that really matters here is uh, this is the server side. This is what our client's going to be connecting with. And so the address, you want to set up your own private little network here of, uh, I just chose uh, 10.200 because uh, my home network's at 10.0. So uh, you don't want to have a conflict there. And then the only other thing that really matters here is your listening port. We're going to be listening on 58 or 51820. And then uh, this is what IP address your client's going to be uh, assuming when it connects in. And then the public key, you generate it just the same way that we generated the, uh, pri the public private key for uh, WireGuard there. And then after we're done with that, we write it out. And then uh, just to make sure that we have the firewall connections open, the first thing we do is uh, allow for uh, SSH, just to make sure we don't get, get disconnected because that's a problem and then it's just a pain. And then we're also going to allow UDP for that port that we just configured in uh, WG0. Enable the, wire, the uh, firewall. It's going to warn you. And clearly we didn't get kicked, kicked off of SSH. So let's just check on our status. 
And there you can see we have our connections already set up to allow connections on both uh, IP4 and 6. And then to start up WireGuard, you just do WG quick up and your WG0. And when you start it up here, I had it already up and running apparently. You'll see what it just uh, did. And then the, the biggest trick after that is that you just uh, then can type the command uh, Oh, uh, then you do system control enable WG quick. Uh, so that way when you restart the uh, computer, uh, it's up and running. So let's just go ahead and try connecting here from my local client. So first of all, I have to go in and edit the, uh, remember that the peer now is my local client is connecting to the server. And so we set the public key of uh, the wire guard that you can get here from the command WG. It announces what its uh, public key is. And then you just paste it in. And uh, you notice that you can either set an IP address or a DNS address. And so then the next thing we do is uh, just the same way that we uh, brought it up on the server, we bring it up on your local client with uh, WG quick up. And there you can see we're connected. And if you run the command WG, you end up seeing that your uh, peer is the server on the other end and that we have traffic going across it. The other big call, other call out here uh, for the local side is that if you're on the other end of a uh, NAT and you want to have a keep alive uh, packet sent every once in a while, uh, you just uh, set that command uh, uh, persistent keep alive or the uh, keep alive equals and then the number of seconds that you care about. To bring it back down, you run the command down. And there you can see that uh, we're bringing it back down and now it's not connected anymore. So one of the other things that you can do with WireGuard if you want to enable uh, uh, natting to get uh, the network uh, so that you can use it as more than just talking to the, your uh, one machine that you're connected into uh, you can set up uh, the IP tables to forward on your uh, traffic. This is again back on the, the server. And so just by setting up the, the IP tables, you can forward on your uh, traffic there. And then you bring back up WireGuard. Again, just really stupid, simple, easy. And there you can see we're uh, connected back up. And we bring it back up here and then you can ping just to prove that it works. And uh, the other big uh, trick here is uh, just to take it back here to right at the end. Uh, on your client, the uh, pure allowed IPs basically serves as an ACL. You, uh, if you have it set to zero, 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 slash zero, you'll end up uh, tunneling all your traffic across the VPN. Uh, unfortunately, when I tried to do that, it, uh, since this was just a Zoom recording, it dropped the connection and just died. But in, uh, to, to run this uh, and install this, it, it was so easy. Unfortunately, the, the demo sort of feels somewhat lackluster just because it, it just was that easy. So we're even uh, trying to set it up in, uh, to set up uh, previous uh, VPNs that I've played with. It, it just was usually a hassle and it took a lot of time and was a lot of trouble. But this, I mean, you, you saw how easy that was. Uh, that just almost didn't even, 
uh, make it worthwhile showing as a demo. So if you want to install it in uh, Mac, it's in the Mac store. It's really easy. Just search for WireGuard in the Apple store. You click install, it installs. And then you just open it back up. You grab that same uh, WG0 file, or if you want to create a new one, uh, and you just import it in. I mean, you, you can uh, just type it in here if you really want to, but that's a lot of trouble and heartburn. So if you uh, go ahead and hit the import uh, tunnels from file, you just bring in your uh, WG0 conf. Now, of course, you can't have more than one uh, uh, VPN or one uh, client connected in here using this. So in a perfect world, if it wasn't a demo, you'd create multiple entries and each uh, machine would have its own uh, WG0 file. But as you can see, we're connected in, everything works great. So if we open up applications and go to terminal, You can uh, just do stupid, simple stuff like uh, uh, ping. And there you can see the tunnels up and running. And that were IP address uh, 10, 200, 0, 02, and connected in. So then you can uh, try to remember what I was doing here. There we go, pinging. If you notice the time, they, it explains why I was a little bit slow on typing there. But there you can see and relatively low latency, really fast and everything works great. The one interesting thing I did find was uh, Traceroute really was not happy with uh, how things were working, but I really didn't dive into it too deeply because I mean, ping works and every I was able to do NFS mounts and all those sort of things and it just worked fine. So then to bring back down the connection, you just hit deactivate and it's just that simple. And when you ping now, of course, it clearly fails. And uh, the really cool thing about Android is if you uh, are feeling really lazy and don't want to try and uh, type in a file, you can actually uh, do it all via QR code. So you just uh, snap your QR code and then you just name it. I'm being very creative with my uh, name here. And you just say yes. And there you are connected. And of course, you can see that it's the same exact settings that I had before. Complete with the keep alive and all that stuff. So as you can see, it's just really, really easy uh, to use and very approachable. So to show you how that QR uh, code was generated, uh, there's a uh, command prompt uh, that you just have to apt install QR in code. And you just do ta dash T uh, for what format it is. And then you just uh, pipe in your WG0 conf file that you want to use. And it generates your QR code right for you there on the uh, command prompt. So it's real easy, no muss, no fuss. It's pretty much almost stupid how easy it was. It's almost embarrassingly easy at this point to use. And I think that that was my big uh, demos there.
And of course, uh, here's some of the, uh, uh, how I came about uh, getting this presentation together. And then uh, Linode has some really great documentation on how to set up various stuff. And then these are the various security holes that I was talking about. And uh, other than that, uh, the, the only other really uh, cool thing to show off that I did this uh, whole PowerPoint slide was uh, completely done uh, via LaTeX. So it took far longer than uh, it took to uh, present it uh, clearly. So if we look at my uh, the, the background to it, since uh, I know there was someone who was asking about it earlier, uh, the, this is what's the, the backing uh, of it is just almost embarrassingly standard uh, uh, Beamer uh, LaTeX. Anyone have any questions or comments or thoughts? Or want to see other stuff with uh, WireGuard here? Uh, unfortunately, you mentioned it, was, uh, it was easy. Yeah, I, I mean, I building this presentation, I thought it was going to be because I remember playing with uh, uh, OpenVPN before and it just being a hassle and you have to copy files across and this and that and it's just a nightmare to try and make work. But this it was actually arguably if I knew it was this easy, I would have scheduled someone else to present something else just because it didn't take any time at all to get working. It's good to know because I am using OpenVPN right now and I was considering trying something else out. So I'm, I might have to try this out considering. Yeah, uh, like, like, like you saw, the, the biggest problem I had was getting uh, the uh, net mask and all of those forwarding stuff figured out. And I had to remember what, uh, what address is what for the, the CIDR uh, uh, flags there and all those sort of things. But I mean, that, that's, that's not WireGuard's fault. That's the, the fact that I suck at networking. And I mean, you'd run into the same exact problems with uh, OpenVPN. Uh, yes, so we've, uh, I think we've talked about guacamole. It's been a few years now uh, to, to Kyle's uh, comment about doing a presentation on uh, uh, software like uh, guacamole. Uh, it's basically a uh, web-based uh, uh, desktop sharing application that uh, since it's uh, a web server, it's really easy to expose and it's, it's using HTTPS to tunnel everything and it, it's a really solid program. I, I'd be very much interested in seeing it. Uh, Kyle, were you volunteering for that for uh, a presentation here in the future or would you like uh, someone else to talk about it? Okay. I do it sometime. She's done crying now, but hopefully she won't go back to it. But I could, I could do it sometime. And just that kind of software is kind of cool. I like, I like being able to. I can use SSH in tunnels, so I can access. Right now, I can access. Um, if I'm not at my home network and I can't work right on the server, like OpenVPN would be something good I could use, but then also just ways to access various computers like Guacamole. I think there's a, another bunch of software to do that too. But also, I was also going to suggest the, like the small business servers, like the Soho small business server distributions that provide like DHCP and all these various services, maybe like compare those? Yeah, that would be very cool. I, I have to admit, I don't know as much about some of those as uh, uh, I probably should, but- uh, I don't know much about them either. It's, it'd be cool to research and figure out. It, it definitely uh, one thing to consider rather than uh, 
uh, SSH tunnels, uh, WireGuard would definitely be a viable option to connect into your home uh, network. Yeah. Because it's just a matter of setting up uh, port forwarding to uh, or the uh, your uh, the all of your your forwarding uh, basically just as if you're setting up any other networking, and then you can just expose it right onto your network. And uh, the biggest trick is uh, editing that, uh, oh, uh, whatchamacallit, the, in your... Config file. Yeah, your config file there. Sorry, I'm trying to open up files. Apparently, uh, uh, Linux is being very angry about long-term screen sharing uh, because it shouldn't be that hard to open up a, a folder here. Yeah, something went. Um. But yeah, uh, it's all in how you set up that uh, uh, config file and how you have your uh, just that that uh, IP address set up. Because I mean, like for example, for my local network, you could do uh, 10.0.0.0 slash whatever it is, 32 or something like that. Um, I had a couple questions, but you didn't see them. Yeah, go ahead. Um, one, what because you were talking about networking, so maybe I already have my answer since you didn't get, get to the networking like quick. Um, if you had any examples my question was going to be if you had any examples on the crypto key routing, um, but I guess not. Uh, no, I, I really didn't dive too deeply into that. I know that you can have uh, multiple peers set up and it ends up being more of a peer-to-peer -peer network than just the uh, one uh, server. Well, not exactly peer-to-peer, -peer, like a peer-to-peer -peer application, like BitTorrent or something, but it would be... Um, like a router and routing points and yes each of the routes and ports that are open can be different per key so whoever is connecting in it just identifies with the key um what quote profile it's going to use and yes there are probably multiple ways to think of that or 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 do that and, and use it in layers. Um, I just wondered if you... Yeah, I, I didn't really dive too deeply into that uh, just because I, I sort of ran out of time. But uh, the, the whole idea that, like say if you have server A and server B and server C, if they're all set up as peers to each other, if you want to talk from server A to server B, uh, then it talks directly in a tunnel and server C stays completely out of it. So you can have sort of almost a uh, uh, mesh of networking all together. And that way you don't have to worry about, oh, I only have so much bandwidth here when server C is maybe in uh, Djibouti or someplace like that, you uh, connect directly to them. Um, and did you have did you do any tests of uh, IPsec or open SSL versus this in, so in I, the, the speed or bandwidth that you got? I, I didn't uh, just because I, I absolutely hate uh, years ago was the last time I deal, dealt with uh, open swan. And uh, it was just such a pain to try and set up that I didn't ever successfully get it to work. Uh, but I mean, like for example, uh, Cisco's implementation, I know I use every day uh, and it's perfectly fast and fine. Uh, this, I mean, since it is kernel level, it's going to be just absolutely as fast as you can possibly get. Uh, all of the reports and specs I saw online said that it will be faster than uh, IPsec, if not, it's equal. Yeah, that, 
that's what I've read too. I just wanted to hear if you had any, uh, I assume you have better hardware than I, uh, if you had any testing. No, uh, basically I got this working uh, last night at about midnight and called it quits then. Mm -hmm. And uh, encryption, when you ran through this, I assume you were going through the quick start. Um, it's picking a default uh, crypto out of yes. that list, or it's using all of those together? My understanding is it's using all of them. So for like uh, uh, the symmetric, symmetric uh, encryption, once it comes up with a key, it, it uses ChaCha20 because it's fast. Uh, but like say for the the key to, uh, to generate the keys, it's uh, using uh, that HKDF. Uh, honestly, I, I've heard of most of these before, but uh, being able to give you wh what's the difference between them, I, I'd be really hard pressed with a gun to my head. Uh, I know that uh, the elliptic curve stuff is the the hottest, best, greatest stuff on the 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 block, and that I, if I remember right, that's not the one that the NSA supposedly uh, uh, jiggered a bunch of the numbers to make it easier for them to uh, crack. So the way you interpreted that was someone. Or, or they they are using all of those at some point in time. That, that's my understanding of it. I very well could be wrong though, because uh, yeah. I'll be the first one to admit that I'm not good at encryption. And other than using the sort of like standard that uh, everyone says you should use, I, I'm not the one to implement it or tell you which one to use. Uh, I I'm but a simple software developer. And if any normal mere mortal tells you that I generated a new encryption scheme, don't use it because uh, they're going to get it wrong. But the good news is all of this has been audited by a third party and it's, it passed and the, it's actually a small enough block of code and it's simple enough that if you really wanna go out and read uh, kernel code, you can audit it yourself and have at least a moderately okay chance of understanding what's happening. And by making it so simple, the the best news is that there's less to possibly go wrong, where like WireGuard is a, a huge monster of code, where there's a lot more risk there. And do you mean IPsec? Um, IPsec as well. I mean, yeah. but uh, anyway, uh, does anyone else have any other uh, questions, comments, thoughts, snide remarks? Uh, hearing none. Uh, we, we've sort of hit the, the part of the, uh, the meeting where I ask if anyone wants to volunteer for uh, next month uh, to present. I might, but we got to see how things go with the baby. Understand completely. Yeah. Um, Brain injury makes it harder, so I don't have very much time to nerd out and things and, and get... Well, that's fine. Uh, I mean, I, I can make a swing at uh, guacamole as well. It's been a few years since I've looked at it, but I was really impressed at how easy it was to set up. Yeah, I've heard so, the same thing about it. I'll look into the guacamole software and also some of its like counter ones, because that's something I, I'm interested in recently too. Hey, here's Tito. He says hi. Yeah, so we, we can definitely get something uh, together. Maybe we'll collaborate and uh, can divide and conquer there. Uh, uh, cool. Okay, yeah, cool. Uh, 
but yeah, so usually at this point, I'd say that we should go out to a uh, restaurant and uh, uh, have the, the after party and talk about uh, nerdy stuff there. But I, I guess the restaurants are open to 50% now. But uh, everybody's going to die. Well, yes. Are they open uh, on Friday? So, no, the mm-hmm. bar is open on Friday. Oh. Uh, right now, we're at 50% uh, occupancy for uh, restaurants. So, <sighs> okay. yeah, uh, whether or not that's a good idea, uh, everyone should really try and stay healthy. Uh, is uh, anyone, just uh, in other nerding out, uh, is uh, anyone doing anything really cool with uh, uh, Linux stuff here lately or?